Good morning. I'm Lynn. I'm Arnie. And welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. We're a little bit later today because we went out for breakfast, but that's the nice thing about being a sheep farmer. You're on your own schedule. But we're here now, so we gotta get going. Let's get started. Smashed my good knee yesterday, so I figured I'd be a freeloader today. And we're gonna go on a ride with the skid steer to feed the bottle babies. Makes you feel like a kid again, like you're on an amusement ride. This is what Arnie gets to do every day. I walk everywhere and Arnie drives machinery everywhere. He doesn't walk. And he thinks he's funny too, even when he's driving, that he's going to smash me into things. If we were out for dinner, I would say he was driving drunk, but it's just coffee. sheep here is coming so you'll start to hear the escalation in the noise in anticipation they know what the skid steer means here we go oh and we got a little interloper in the feeder over there This one, you see, this little one is a new one in the feeder, and it's got an orange dot on its back, so it's from the little pen. Number three was from that pen, and so that's why this guy, we got to get him back into this pen, and that's how they get mixed up, because he could be spooked now when Ernie goes in and hop in there. See where he hops, if he tries to get out or not. But you see, he wants, he's gonna, yep, in the wrong pen. So I have to catch that lamb now and put him back in this pen. So uh, putting the little marks on their back definitely helps uh, in sorting out lambs when they do something like that. Now catching them will be a different story because those little lambs are like lightning when you want to try catch them. Okay, the little hungry monsters are all on their feeder. They're doing a great job at that now. They got it mastered. That's what it looks like from above. And they're all in a nice little row today too. And now, oh, here, that's really good. I got them in the creep area. There. So now I can catch, see, he's got a dot on his back. The others don't. So this is the one that got into the wrong pen. We'll get Arnie and we'll try. There he is, the escapee, 47. What's the brown on his feet? That's a cross? Oh, it must be. He's got little brown speckles on his feet. You're pretty clever. Let's get you into where you're, you belong. See, the dots work, eh, hon? The dots work. So we'll try that again uh, when we have Suffolk lambs, because uh, when we have them put different codes on them, so that that way we can figure out where they belong. Hey, if you're going to use the dots and the Suffolk, you're going to end up, what, with five dots in each sheet? <laughs> well, one group will have no dots. One will have one, or maybe we can just color code them. Now with suffix, it's harder though because they the black wool real hard to see a lot of the colors. Okay, so my job is salt and minerals and drinkers. Arnie's gonna feed uh, the creep feed first, and then he's gonna be feeding a bale of hay in here while I do all that. Wanna pass me their little bucket when you come out?
So this pen now gets uh, creep feed on both sides because they're they're growing. Look at number one. Look at how big she is. Yeah, but she, she's grown quite a lot. Look at how big she is. And she doesn't even run away when you're in there. The Here they come, you see? They know it's there. And they'll start filtering in now. So people asked about uh, when they start decreasing the amount of milk they take in and this is when um, they will decrease the milk intake because uh, now that they're eating solid food their stomachs will be filling up and they won't need to be nursing off mom as much and as they stop nursing off mom Mom's milk will start to naturally decrease too because she doesn't want to form mastitis and have swelling udder, which is painful. So nature will say, my lamb's not drinking as much now, so I don't need to produce as much. And by three months, uh, the ewes will be pretty well dried right off and the lambs will be drinking water out of the drinker and just eating uh, food like the parents do. So these are the creep feeders now. As you can see, they're slowly getting more, la more and more lambs eating at them. And you see, if, if the lambs see one doing it, they all follow along. So um, the first groups usually start eating a little bit later because uh, they have no one to copy. But once uh, you get a few going, then all the others in the pen are quick to follow. And it will get to the point where we uh, might have to add a second creep feeder so that they can all fit on at once. And there's Chewie's little lamb cupcake. She just came in. And see, they're all at it. So as I was saying earlier, um, the good thing about being a sheep farmer is that you're not on a really, really tight schedule. You can um, do your chores anytime you want, as long as they get done. It's not like milking cows where if you're an hour late, they're going to be leaking milk and in pain because their udders are engorged. You can basically get up when you want, do chores when you want, just so long as everyone's fed and everyone's cared for. Uh, you have that type of freedom on a sheep farm and this time of year is uh, probably the best for us because um, pretty well everybody's lamb now, the lambs are all well on their way and it's just getting ready for winter. Um, it's not excessively bu busy so we can be a little more relaxed and spend a little more time enjoying the animals and stuff like that. Whereas come January, February, which is our busiest time of the year, um, you'll see a lot more stress on the farm. We won't have enough, as much time to spend doing this type of thing. And yeah, we're gonna be getting up earlier and less time for hiking and going out for breakfast and stuff. But with farming, it is every day. If you have animals, you have to be here every day. It's very hard to get away, but you can set your own schedule. It's a bonus. Right? Are you lovely? She's really lovely. She's in Sheriff's breeding group. You're very lovely. Warney tossed out some of the old uh, hay for bedding and put in the new bale and some of it landed on her. So this you is attracting all the lambs and it's funny. Um, the hay will be in the trough and they won't touch it and you'll toss it out because it's uh, like basically all sticks and stuff and you're just going to use it for bedding so you can roll the new stuff out and the first thing uh, they do is they all go try eat it. They wouldn't look at it when it was in the trough. But that's all to do with that theory about putting new things up, out, shaking it up. Um, all those things attract the sheep to go eat it. So if you go, if uh, the, it's sitting in your trough, go and kick it in or fluff it up with a pitchfork and they'll all come uh, tearing over to eat it because uh, it'll, they'll think it's new and they'll feel like it's new and that's how you get them to 
uh, clean out the trough and eat it properly. So this barn just got their grain and you can see at the back of the barn there's the rolled up hay from yesterday. So now instead of bringing in a new bale of hay, he'll just roll that back and then they'll have fresh hay even though it's yesterday's hay. So he's just walking back now while they're nibbling on their grain here. He's gonna get that bale. He's gotta turn it around because you have to go with how the bale is coiled up and he'll just roll it back out. Okay, and you do have to be careful of Max because he's going at bullet speed when he comes down the feeder. And again, as Arnie is doing hay, I go around the barn and do the salt and mineral and the drinkers and I check on the sheep to make sure everyone's okay. And like I said, it's a little easier at this time of year because uh, in these pens, I'm not checking for udders or anything like that because uh, this, these are breeding groups. Uh, there are no udders. So all I'm looking for here is making sure that everybody's eating okay, which they are. We have no issues in the barn with any of the ewes, knock on wood yet. The rams are all in good condition and stuff. Um, that's all we want to see. Nobody's limping, nobody's got pink eye. Um, just a quick, uh, quick glance on these uh, girls. Uh, once uh, they get closer to lambing, then we're going to be looking at them more heavily because then you can run into issues with pregnancy toxemia and um, other issues that can be caused by uh, lambing. Pretty good on those things too. Rare that we have those issues, but you never say never and you always watch out for things going wrong. In this pen we have Geronimo. Geronimo is Felon's son who we saw yesterday in the barnyard looking at all they use and Gimli was fighting with them. Um, side by side you're really hard pressed to tell those two boys apart but Geronimo is the son and likewise Killer was also a Felon's son. But that's Geronimo in there. Just missed that because again I had you had to run quickly but <laughs> just when you say nothing ever happens uh, when they're feeding we have separate bars so that each one puts their head in but occasionally you get two like these two big girls had to have their head in the same slot and they were stuck. One of them was choking because the, her air was getting cut off. And yeah, they can die like that. If you're not there, they, you'll come and you'll find a sheep laying at the feeder that's uh, died of suffocation because they've both put their heads in at the same time. Doesn't happen too much with uh, the adults because the slots are sized so that only one can get their head in. So if two do get their head in, it really is bad, but it's, they, they got to really work on it to get two heads in. Where you'll see the problems is when you're in the ewe and lamb pen where the lambs are trying to eat with the ewes because a lamb can easily fit its head in with the mom and the lamb, the moms don't care and the lambs will get strangled by the mothers. Again, it doesn't happen all the time, but um, it is something that you watch out for and it does happen. This is our grain bin in the barn and it's pretty well out of creep feed right now. So it's time to fill it up to feed these guys. We have an old grinder mixer where we mix our own grain. It's a mixture of cracked corn, barley, and roasted soybeans. And we're gonna pour it into this bin at the front of the barn. And it's made up to be about a 16 to 17% ration. Right now we're gonna feed the cream to the rams. So we have to mix up a bunch of cream feed for them. They're all waiting.
Casanova who's spoiled, who gets a little treat before we feed the rest. Calvin! Just feed them, Arnie. Arnie, that's how you cause a fight. So next we scoop up a pail of it for the boys. We get our handy limestone. Add a bit of that in to stop st rams from getting stones. You mix it all up in there. These rams are getting about just less than a pound a head per feeding. They also get hay and they're on pasture as well. And that's how we feed grain to our replacement sheep. And the rams that we're selling, which are these guys. They're lambs. And here's Sally the Shetland eating. I know there's some of you that really like to see her every day. She's our old 17 year old. And you can see she's walking pretty smoothly right now. I don't know if you saw that, but she's, uh, I'm positive now that she just uh, uh, hit her foot and sprained it or something because uh, she's walking pretty uh, well now. But you can see she's an adult and these are lambs. So you can see how small Shetlands are. And I was actually known for having big Shetlands. She's kind of ragged looking, but she's earned it. So this Shetland is a Cat Mogat Shetland, which means she has a darker underbelly and lighter upper wool. And on her face, you can see she's kind of got a, well, her head's down now, but she's kind of got a little stripe that comes around um, down her eyes and up to her nose. And anyway, she's a cat mulget. I used to, and she'd be um, a gray cat mulget. But uh, Shetlands were always fun because um, I bred heavily for, um, different markings and different colors and so you had to play around with genetics a lot and know how genetics worked so that you could pick appropriate rams and use to breed together to get um, really desirable markings ones that were popular for buyers it was a hobby of mine so I was breeding for the pet market so all of my sheep again they all got sold um, some went as breeding stock and all the rest went as pets. Any rams that I couldn't sell as breeding st stock I would neuter and they went to pet farms and fiber farms because Shetlands are renowned for their fine long wool. So you can get uh, various colors, you don't need to dye it. Um, it's very, very nice to spin, it's very soft and the colors are awesome. And one thing about them is, as you can see by this old girl, they're extremely hardy. They never get sick, it seems. I don't ever remember having sick Shetlands. And um, another thing that was really fun with them, because I was breeding for unusual markings and colors, because the pet market really sold heavily. If, but the cuter they were, the easier they sold. Um, so during lambing, Every day was like a box of chocolates. You never knew what you were going to get until you opened it up. It was, it was awesome. Shetlands are more of a wild breed. Um, they're raised in the Shetland Islands and basically they go out onto those harsh islands and they survive and once a year they're gathered up and sheared for their wool and uh, off they go again. So um, they're extremely hardy breed and flighty and hard to win over. Now this girl, like I've mentioned to other people, I've had her almost 17 years. She was born on the farm 
and I've never touched her except during shearing time. But that's not how all my Shetlands were. My Most of my Shetlands were like all the sheep on our farm here. They were big babies and pets and stuff like that. So, because um, I was in the pet market, I had an easy time selling them because mine were way friendlier than normal. Okay, so we have a ram escape. Arnie put the mixer away, but didn't think to shut the gate behind him. So we got the rams all over the yard. Come on, you guys. It's time to go into your own paddock. Okay, you don't want to be eating that stuff. It's plastic. Why would you want to eat that? Come on. Back you go. Into your paddock. There you go. Get him that way, Ben. There you go. Your paddock's that way. Come on. There you go. That's good, boys. Oh, now they're going to start their silly behavior again. But at least they're a little better than the other day. And there were no fatalities and no major injuries. But yeah, I'm sure there are quite a few headaches. I just love it when we come out for afternoon chores because everyone's so chill. These are all the replacement ewe lambs. Every afternoon around between three and four, they have a little siesta period and all the barns do it. You guys are so nice. I feel almost guilty going in here and disturbing them all. Hi everybody. It's bottle time. Who wants their bottles? I'm guessing you guys want your bottles. Yes, who wants their bottles? You guys? Okay, here I come. Obviously, I'm not disturbing that one. But everybody's doing okay. All the moms and lambs are spread out. They're all lying in their own little clusters. Some are nursing. Some are laid flat out. Some have a little itch. A few of them even in the creep area. Some are snuggled up with their moms. So we're out with the boys now. Because we're going to give them a new pen today. It's not a new pen, but it's going to look new. Redecorating. I figure we have done more redecorating on the barns than we do on the house. After a day of fighting, Gimme likes to have a little bit of loving. I'm right here filming it. Katie, come here. Well, 
we're done for the day. We're in waiting for dinner to cook and we got our TV on. This is our routine every night. Yeah, and Arnie's got his drink. That's enough every night too. <laughs> Keeps me alive. And we watch Netflix. So I'm gonna thank you for watching. How's my hair? And hope you join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Good night. Bye for now.